of Alley Oop. This week we've got another episode of Weekend Update for you guys. It might still be football season for a lot of you, but in the words of the rapper Nas, basketball season has returned. So you can hate me now, but there's a lot to talk about. We'll be having various experts coming on to speak about what's happening here in Ann Arbor as well as around the country. So first I'll welcome our favorite Michigan fan, Andy. Andy, come on in here. We're going to have you talk about uh, some exhibition games that occurred uh, over the last week. We'll start with the women's team. First of all, who the heck did they play? I don't even know. <laughs> they played Northwood. All right. Yeah, it was a great game. Uh, the women looked great, honestly. They really showed why they're preseason number 25. You know, you got Isabel in her first game. She looked awesome. And then Nas combined, they had a great post presence. It, yeah. It's really looking good. Nas the double-double machine, yeah. and I think the first preseason top 25 for the women's team ever. I might be wrong on that one. So I, I don't, don't know the, <laughs> if that's correct or not, but let's go with it. Yeah, pretty cool, and, and coming off an NCAA tournament berth as well. For sure. So uh, then on the other side of the coin is the men's team, and uh, they played Saginaw Valley State. Do you yeah. know where that is? I do. It's uh, I in S Saginaw Valley. Uh, okay. <laughs> right, yeah, that makes no, sense. No, it's here right. in Michigan, you know. It's a, it's a smaller school, big rival of Grand Valley State University. Uh, yeah. Um, Grand Valley's is. like I a mean, Division II football powerhouse, I think. They so, are, you're yeah. right. All right, yeah. there we go. So, um, no, the men looked good, too. They had a lot of ball movement. It was really interesting to see the different schemes that they were throwing out there. Obviously, they had a lot of turnover with our new coach. Um, and it was interesting to see the different um, – differences between Beeline's offense and then obviously Howard's offense. Yeah, and speaking of new coaches, Coach Howard's first game yeah. uh, in Chrysler, were people excited to see him out there? Yeah, I mean, obviously the fans came out. Uh, the May's rage was going crazy. <laughs> um, I think everyone's really excited about the potential of this team. I feel like they're being overlooked a little bit, mm -hmm. and it, it might, it'll might it be interesting to see how they do. Yeah, definitely a good turnout for an exhibition game, uh, and that's something that a new coach can bring, especially one that's beloved already by our fan base. So exactly. thanks, Andy, for yeah, talking about that. Next, we're going to bring in Ethan. Ethan is going to come on in here and talk about Michigan basketball, of course. Yes. Yeah, Ethan's our Jawan Howard expert, and we were just talking about Coach Howard a little bit. Now, you went to the first game. You were there in person, boots on the ground. What did you see in the first game against the first real game for Coach Howard against Appalachian State? You know, I just saw a man who loves basketball. He was so happy to be back in Chrysler coaching this team. His buddy Jalen Rose was there. Chris Weber and the rest of the Fab Five texting him good, uh, good luck messages. Just like the love for Michigan basketball is there. He bleeds uh, blue, and like this is his team. And, you know, I just saw a guy who, you know, trying out a system, and it's still, you know, there's kinks in it. Yeah. He's taking a lot of advice from his assistant coaches, especially Phil Martelli, mm -hmm. which is good to see because they got out to a fast start, and it slowed down in the second half, especially when Appalachian State was playing a, a zone in the second half. But I just saw a lot of good things, and, like, you saw improvements from Eli Brooks, and, you know, that's, that's perfect for the start of the season for Juwan. Yeah, and good for Coach Howard to draw on the experience of some of his assistant coaches, maybe something he could have used in that press conference earlier <laughs> in the week when he talked about some of the great recruits we may or may not have coming in. We yeah. can't necessarily talk about those, but those will be good things for Coach Howard to learn um, as we move on. Uh, anything else you want to talk about with the game? Yeah, you know, I just see – uh, he's going to take a lot. He's going to be uh, in the in the office watching this film, and he's going to learn from it. He's going to use his connections in the NBA. Eric Spolstra, he's going to talk to these guys, and he's going to come back even stronger. Uh, I don't I don't expect to see a drought like we saw in the first game ever again from this team because I think he'll really coach them up well and come up with good plans for the rest of the season. Good. Well, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. Big game coming up next week against Creighton, and uh, I'll be interested to see what you have to say about that one too. Next, we're going to bring in Allie. Allie is, of course, our Michigan basketball women's expert, and she's a little bit of a spy uh, for us as well, and we'll talk about that as, as we go on. But first, Allie, why don't you talk about the season opener officially for the women's team coming up against Western Michigan? Well, I'm super excited to see the ladies out there officially for the first time this year. Uh, they're gonna be playing against Western Michigan. And I think the highlight matchup that we're going to be looking for there is Brianna Mobley, who's a redshirt senior for the Broncos. 
uh, is going to be it's going to be a good matchup against Nas Holman, who we love to see out there. We've already mentioned once our double double machine here, our secret weapon at Michigan. So I think we're excited to see that and just see how the ladies come together and really show off again that they're that number 25 preseason uh, team. Now you talked about our secret we weapon on the team actually out there on the floor, but you might be our secret <laughs> weapon as far as Intel goes. You've got a little bit of a personal connection, a little bit I would say, of a <laughs> personal connection to one of the players on Bradley who we've got coming up this Sunday. Yeah, that's true. My little sister is on the Bradley women's basketball team. so. And it's a bit of a homecoming for a few other members on the team as well. Bradley's got uh, sisters that played for Ann Arbor Prep High School in the area in Ypsilanti. Um, and then my little sister who played at Huron High here. And their coach actually used to coach at Concordia in Ann Arbor. So it'll be a big uh, day for the Braves coming like almost home for five or six of the members of the team. So Now, just because Allie and her family are from around here, don't <laughs> let that fool you. They're still Duke fans. But it will be cool for her to get to play at Chrysler in front of the family. That'll be awesome. What number does she wear? 30. All right, so we'll be on John the lookout. Uh, of course, John Shire. So we'll be on the lookout for Allie's sister. And uh, thanks for coming in here, talking about women's basketball. Next, we'll have Jake coming in. He's our college basketball expert all around. And uh, Jake, like I said, it may still be football season, but there were some big games the other night on the hardwood at Madison Square Garden. Why don't you talk about those a little bit? Absolutely. So we know that the college of bas basketball season on the men's side always kicks off with a bang at the Champions Classic. We have the same four teams every single year, but this might have been one of the most exciting years of the Champions Classic. We had coach Mike Krzyzewski snapping a personal three-game losing skid to Bill Self as Duke took down Kansas. And then the late game might have been the most impressive as number two Kentucky came in and took down preseason number one Michigan State, which the young Wildcats, we know they cycle in pretty much a new lineup of five stars every single year to come in and put up a performance like that against the very veteran-laden Michigan State team was no small success. And I think John Calipari's team made a statement. Granted, it is the first game in a long season, but it will be very interesting to follow the Wildcats from this point forward. Yeah, no doubt. And with expectations so high for Michigan State, I think it's nice for Michigan fans to see them go down early even though if it is an early game uh, we know that they're not unbeatable like we certainly thought Duke was at this time last year uh, so that's nice Michigan's 1-0 Michigan State's 0-1 for those of you counting um, also we had kind of a weird start in the ACC talk about that a little bit yeah so I wasn't even sh aware that this was really gonna be happening this year but apparently outside of team of the Ta champions classic that being Duke the ACC sort of did a little season opener, conference opener against each other. So there were some notable matchups throughout the conference. For me, the one that stood out the most was defending champion Virginia, Tony Bennett's fighting Cavaliers coming in and holding Syracuse to 34 points in the season opener. And this, despite replacing three guys that they lost at the NBA draft last year, that being DeAndre Hunter, Kyle Guy, and Ty Jerome. So very impressive performance. We've come to expect this by now from Tony Bennett's Cavaliers, always very well coached stingy on the defensive end, clearly making a very resound opening statement as they shut down the orange this past week. Yeah, no doubt the defending champs are a force to be reckoned with. Always good on defense, and uh, that plays well in March, except for maybe a couple years ago. Uh, <laughs> that does play well in March. And then one last thing, what player stood out to you the most in these first few days of the season? Right, so for that, I want to go back to what we talked about during the Champions Classic. So. Going back to the team that impressed me the most, which was Kentucky, and like I mentioned, we know that Kentucky basically replaces a lot of impressive prospects. Every single year, guys go into the NBA. We also know that the last few years, you could argue that the hole's been to some of his parts. For me, Tyrese Maxey, unbelievably impressive. First game coming in, 26 points, helping to hold Cassius Winston, preseason player of the year, to 5 of 12 shooting. Again, Wildcats coming away with a, bit, coming away with a big win, and they look like, once again, the front runners in the SEC as we head towards further into the regular season. All right, sounds good. Thanks for coming in. We love that college basketball analysis. So uh, that's all we've got for you today in terms of experts. Um, I know that with Halloween having just passed, the words home season opener against Appalachian State might be scary to Michigan fans, but no need to fear. Michigan basketball 1-0, and the women's team should be 2-0 by Sunday, although, Allie, you know, we're, we're, we're rooting on both sides of the coin to some extent this week. So thanks for tuning in to Allie Oop and our weekend update. We like doing this segment. We think it's a lot of fun, and we hope you guys do too, and we hope you check out the rest of our stuff here at Allie Oop.